Right, uh, so morning everyone. Uh, so this is the start of session 2B. Um, well, I was told I'm not allowed to make a Shakespeare joke, um, so we can just crack into it. Uh, see, I've got it in there without getting it in there. It's great. Uh, so yes, uh, so I'm Nick. Um, I'm the president of the New Zealand Society of Animal Production. Um, I'm told I'm older than I look, or is it I'm younger than I look? Um, one of them. Um, so somehow managed to get this role um, through perseverance, or less perseverance on other people's part. Um, but as a start, I'll just get our sponsor from uh, Beef and Lamb to get up and get their spiel and part of it away. Yeah. <laughs> You're really selling it, Nick. Um, hi, everybody. I'm, I know most of you, I think, or a number of you know me. I'm Aaron Meikle, Product and Development Manager at uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand. I'm just standing in, so greetings and apologies from Dan Breyer, our General Manager of Farming Excellence. He had a, um, a, a family bereavement. And I've been on Graston as a group. Oop, I thought I'd finally got out of this bloody role, but um, it keeps dragging you back. And I'm also um, the parent or the custodian of our Feed Smart app, which a few of you may know, and I see there's a paper on that in a couple of days. So I'm not sure if the young author's here in the room, but I'll be the one sitting up the front with my arms crossed when that paper's been given. So looking forward to it. Um, I just want to say one last wee point. Uh, Beef and Land New Zealand recently had Ian Taylor from Animation Research come and talk to one of our staff meetings, and he was brilliant. If you haven't heard him, get along to listen to him or get him to one of your work dues if you can. Um, and one of the key things I took away from that, he talked about how in that company they never use the word challenges or they try to avoid it, they just talk about opportunities. And we've actually seen that in several of the papers today. Um, in our industry at the moment, we are facing, to steal an analogy from Saturday night, what appears to be a remorseless English women's rolling mall of, let's not use the C word, but there's regulation, there's restrictions, there's change coming. Um, but as we saw again, working as a team, a well-placed lift, a well-placed hand can actually steal the ball away and still get a win and avoid being defeated. So the beauty of Graston's conference is we are like a rugby team, I think, in our industry. We've got a lot of the researchers beavering away in the tight five. We've got industry groups and businesses who may be the halves and the, the loose forwards who are connecting and distributing the ball. And then we've got our farmers and our farm families that are uh, ultimately making use of that ball and doing things with it and telling us what they want. So... I love coming to Grasslands and NZDSAP and the Agronomy Conference. It's fantastic that they merge now because um, you never get better applied information. And if we're going to steal the ball, defeat that mall, there's no point blaming the ref or sitting in the stands complaining about it. You've got to get out in the field and play, and it's, it's Grasslands that's going to give us those skills and tools and opportunities to make it all happen. So thank you very much on behalf of Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Stan. Awesome. Notes. I did write notes, um, mainly to keep myself on track. Um, so I won't use any rugby analogies. Um, I played once for one year, um, surprisingly, on the wing. Um, turns out if you pass the ball on the wing, there's no one else to catch it. Um, so I was very quickly unpopular in the team because we were told to pass the ball when you get it. And the first thing I did was pass it. Um, and the parents standing on the sideline aren't very good at catching it. Um, so that was pretty much my rugby career. Um, my younger brother played, broke his face. Um, didn't change his looks much at all. Um, but what I'd like to do first off is just welcome you all. Uh, so it's taken three and a half years uh, for NZSAP to meet as a society as a, at a conference, um, which actually makes me the third president in that time. Um, so when the first one was being organised, it was uh, Renee, who's floating around down there. Uh, then it was Kirsty, and then it became myself at the start of this year. Um, so that itself has been an interesting journey. Um, I spent two months as Vice President, uh, and now you poor buggers are probably going to have me as the longest serving uh, NZSAP President, um, through no fault of my own. Uh, <laughs> but it still gets to uh, talk to you lot. Uh, so I would just like to th also thank the organising committee, especially Jamie, who's put up with this for three and a half years. Um, I think that makes him the longest serving uh, conference organising uh, person. Um, so, yeah. What else can I say? It's been 11 years, I know this, since uh, NZSAP was last in Invercargill, uh, because that was my first NZSAP conference. Um, I came as a student. Um, so 11 years later, I have the pri privilege of standing up here and being the president. Um, and wherever we have our next one, might well be standing up here again. I may have slightly better notes. Um, but just to take you through some of the stuff that we've been doing behind the scenes. Um, so. I think in February this year, we actually reached an all-time low in membership. Um, we had about 30 paid-up members. 
uh, which inspired me to send out an email to all of our members saying, uh, please pay your subscriptions or I will turn up and shake you by your ankles and see what falls out of your pockets. Uh, and we promptly doubled our uh, membership and we're trying to find ways to just engage with the community again and get the engagement to get our memberships back to where we used to be. I think last time we were in Invercargill there were about 200 odd members, so we're currently sitting between 80 and 100 members currently. So we're just wanting to get ourselves back in front of people, show that we are scientists, we're getting communication out to farmers, we're getting communication out into the wider scientific community for the betterment of science in the country. Um, so with that, we're looking to do stuff like um, start up webinars and have more regular uh, ways to transmit the science we're learning. Um, this year we've also done a publication only uh, version of the journal, um, which you know, in looking at it, that's probably going to be part of our webinar series is to get those people the opportunity to present their information. Um, whether they want to or not, we'll find that out, um, but that's one thing we're going to go about doing. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so I will say that it's been a pleasure to be the president. Um, I sort of thought I had like two years before I got to being president, but it's been a pleasure and a learning experience at the same time. Um, and one of the other big things we've been doing in the background is around animal food regulations. Um, so recently MPI did a change to the food, <laughs> food regs, uh, which meant that any animal in the country that was uh, undertaken in the experiment, which most of the people sitting in this room have conducted experiments with animals, would have discovered uh, part of the rig that was changed was that no longer did they have to be treated with an experimental substance to become experimental. The word substance was too complex for the regulation, so they took it out. So that means that the wording became any animal that was involved in experiment is now an experimental animal for the rest of its life. Now, a cow lives for five years. All of her products coming from that cow are experimental, which includes milk. So you go and do a trial with a farm with 400 cows, he can no longer send that milk to a factory to be processed for the next five years from the cows that were in that cohort. So 4,000 cow, 4, litres of milk, 400 cows, it starts to become a lot of milk very quickly. Um, so we raised this um, as a society with uh, MPI uh, about two weeks ago. Last week we had a meeting with them and they're very quickly starting to work on changing the wording of that regulation. So I've got here that there will be a guidance um, put out to say what is an experimental animal. Because brilliantly in the regulation, where it says an animal becomes experimental, it doesn't define what an experimental animal is. So up to you to decide what experimental animal is, so that's what happened. So that's the first thing they're going to do. Next up, uh, we've got a notice, which is changing the regulations, or explaining what the intended working of that regulation is. So how is it meant to be applied? Obviously, if you're going out and measuring how much a cow weighs, you're not fundamentally changing the cow, apart from a theoretical physics perspective where you've observed the phenomenon and now it's different to what it was. Um, but the cow is still the cow, so she's not experimental for being measured. So this is what they're now changing the regs or notifying the regulation for. And then over the next year, they're actually going to amend the regulation itself. Um, part of this is going to require some consultation with scientists, because technically didn't happen when they made the change. So what I'm sort of hinting at there, or leading to, is giving you fair warning that you may end up with an email from MPI saying, this is how we would like to change the wording of this regulation. Can you give us feedback on it? Because what has happened is they don't actually know who the scientists are. This is the food safety regulation part of the MPI. They're not usually involved with most of the stuff we're doing, because A, regulations, stay away from that, um, and food safety, unless you're doing meat science or actually tasting the milk that's being produced by the cow, not a lot of us are doing stuff in the food safety area. It's kind of weird when you think about what we're feeding the animals, but that's sort of where we end up. So that is your sort of forewarning, um, and if you're happy for MPI to um, get in touch with you, don't say anything. If you are worried about MPI getting in touch with you or having your email address, um, which technically they'd have through either the IRS or IRD. Um, let me know, and I won't keep you on the list of people that get asked. Otherwise, probably in about two weeks, you'll end up with some information from MPI saying, this is what we want to change. Does this seem sensible?
which technically, if they'd done it a year ago, would mean that we're not doing it now. But politics works in a fantastic way. Um, and one thing I've noted as a slight caveat is next year happens to be an election, um, and the regulation sign-off is by a minister. So depending on the outcome of the election, the person signing off on the change to the regulation may not be the person who is advised that there's a change coming to the regulation. Um, other than that, I'm going to close it there and we can start doing our uh, presentations for the day or the morning um, because I've run out of crib notes on my uh, piece of paper and listened to myself for long enough. So, well, thank you.